now, my people, my people. It's your guy, Kunle, a.k.a. the Ninja Englishman. And it's your boy, Kanebi, a.k.a. Mr. Go Ball. Go Ball. Go and Ball. welcome to another episode of Round on the Ground. Let's go. World Cup, World Cup, World Cup. I said it once and I say it again. It's an incredible World Cup. I didn't know, I don't know about you. I didn't know how to feel about a November World Cup at the start, but it's been pretty exciting. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, it's been pretty exciting. It's been pretty good. A lot of shockers, a lot of um, crazy results. A lot of people, they have lost their bets and they have lost money, but <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Let's talk about the crazy results to start off with. Nobody expected what happened with Saudi Arabia against Argentina. They came from behind to win 2-1. Did you see that one coming? Um, I never saw it coming. A lot of people didn't see it coming. Only if you were a spiritual person, <laughs> you could have seen it coming. But nobody did see that coming. And um, Saudi Arabia, psh, kudos to them. But they lost recently to, who did they lose to? Poland. Poland, yes. Yeah, so, but they still have a chance to qualify yeah. for that from that group. That they have to beat the Mexicans. You've got to give it to Saudi Arabia because at the end of the day, they did end the 36-game unbeaten streak for, for yeah. Argentina. But when it comes to Argentina, do you think it's the same thing that it's all eyes on Messi still? Or now they've been able to win a game in their last game 2-0, do you think, OK, they understand there's more to this game than just looking for the main man? Argentina underestimated their, their opponents. They probably felt it was going to be an easy victory, but... They forget one thing. Football is 11 against 11. It's not 10 against 11. And when you have a team that, that, that works hard for Messi, Messi doesn't defend much, Messi's, his work is at the end of the pitch, uh -huh. the decisive areas of the pitch, it's going to be difficult because football today, you need 11 against 11, not 10 against 11. For sure. Saudi Arabia, they came out in the second half, hungry, determined. They came out with a fight. And I'm not going to lie, the goals were brilliant. And... That's the game of football. But the game of football is just going crazy because that group is just upside down. I think everyone's registered points now. A lot of groups are e upside down. Everyone can qualify through that group. And talking from one goat who was able to get on the score sheet again, that's two more goals in the World with Cup. With a dive. With he dived. Who? Ronaldo. Oh, no, OK. We're talking about Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes, he, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. He dived, and do you think he got the benefit of the doubt because of his name, or what do you think? What happened there? I because think, they didn't I even think, check I VAR. I think it's because it's an African team. They didn't bother to check VAR, which is very, very disrespectful. If it, if it was uh, an England or Spain or France, I bet you they're going to check VAR. That, to me, showed me that a lot of teams are giving special treatment. Some teams are giving the special treatment. Ronaldo was a, cheated on that day. He was a cheat on that day, and for a player... Who is so great at what he does, he, he doesn't need that. He doesn't need that at all. And I am very sad for Ghana. They were robbed. That match could have ended 2-2. I hit, Are you mad at Ronaldo or are you mad at the officials in that situation, though? Can well, I? I would say I'm mad at, I'm mad at both. I'm mad at both because, because at the end look, of the day... Look, look, I, the reason I ask you that is because put yourself in Ronaldo's shoes. You're at a World Cup. You do anything for your country to win. So isn't it down to the officials to then call you out when something happens? Yes, you do anything for you to win, but that doesn't mean you should cheat. That was simulation. That was simulation. And for VAR not to check on that, it shows me that, look, African teams, you guys are on your own with VAR. If anything should happen, you're not doing on your own. Anything for Casala, for boss, for pitch, you're not going to do on your own. And that's the vibe I got. No, but that's what I'm saying. It's down to VAR to save the, the team that, that potentially could be penalised. It's not for the player, because at the end of the day, if I told you Nigeria could win the, 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 the World Cup with uh, Rashidi Yakini, hand of God, would you care? At the end of the day, we won the World Cup, so it's down to the officials to find the solution, football, not for, for the players, football, I think. Rashidi Yakini winning the, winning the World Cup with the hand of God is still cheating. But were you, were you still celebrating? It's still cheating. Were you celebrating? Yes, people will celebrate. People will celebrate, <laughs> but no. it's still cheating. You do not cheat an opponent because when it's your turn, karma is real. When it's your turn, you're not going to like it. You're not going to like being on the end of, uh, on the, end of the stick. No, so, I, look. for me, personally, Ronaldo is too good to do that. He's too good to be doing that. I, 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 it's fair enough, I hear you, but I think it's really down to the officials. And that game could have been a special moment because... Um, we had the Africa. They were the first African nation to score goals in the World Cup this year, Ghana, and it ended three-two. And for me, 
that is my game of the tournament so far. I don't know about you. Well, it was a very high intense game. Shout out to Ghana. They showed um, some fight. They were robbed. Wow, wow, wow. Yesterday, what a game. Spain drew with Germany. And that, great, that group is going absolutely crazy. Everyone has points. Every, everyone can not qualify and everyone can qualify. What do you think of that group so far? Well, that group, that group is crazy. Um, first things first, the Germans, I don't know why they did not start with that number nine. Is it Fukar or what's the name of that number nine striker? The number nine striker that they brought on. Thomas Muller is not doing it for them. He's, he's, not, he's not sharp enough for them. But that number nine, when he came on and played against Spain, he changed the game for them. Because it was an actual number nine. Yeah, it was an actual number nine, and he did the business. And I know Leroy Sané was injured. He came on, he also made a difference against Spain. The Spanish, for me, they look very good on the ball, but they don't have a striker. The, the, you... I, I, think, I think yesterday's game, watching it, that was the difference. When both teams didn't have a striker, at best, Spain kept the ball. They were very expansive with it, pretty football. But as soon, even though we don't rate him typically, as soon as Morata came on the pitch, they, they, were, they were making the German defence nervous. Chances were opening up, spaces were opening up, and the same thing with Germany, man. Yeah, the same thing with Germany. And it was a game where both of them wanted it badly. And um, we saw two world-class teams on display yesterday, and it was a very good game. It's going to be a final day in that group because everybody can come qualify, anybody can qualify, and anything can happen. That's what the World Cup is all about. I have a question about that game. Do you think that was the beginning of the end of the false nine, or was it just that the, the people that played false nine for those teams just couldn't execute it as well as the others? The thing about the false nine, the false nine could act, would work against lesser teams like your Costa Ricas. But when you play a team like the Germans who have, you know, who, who have good defenders and Rudiger, you need to get in behind yeah, you, like you need to get in behind these players. So you need a natural number nine who can actually be a threat, have presence, and actually finish the, finish the, the, the passes and put the ball in the back of the net. So for me, I'm the kind of coach, if I was a coach, I always play with a number nine. I don't, I'm, I, that false nine philosophy... To lead the line, it's, always. It's only when you have the likes of Lionel Messi and the Man City Ahead, team. Yeah, there's some things like special that. players that can play it very yeah. well, but predominantly over a season, I want a proper nine. Yeah. Guys, uh, you, you're watching us in these jerseys. You know that uh, I'm not from France. He doesn't represent England either. But for me, the reason I'm wearing this shirt is because France 90, as I said last time, it is my favorite World Cup experience so far. And there's a kid shining again, on track to potentially get his second World Cup. Three goals, one assist. The man that on, is on everyone's tongue right now, Kylian Mbappe. Is it his year again? Mm, we'll see. But nobody has ever defended the World Cup. That is true. Nobody has ever won a World Cup back to back, apart from the Brazilians. The modern day, modern apart day from football. the Brazilians in the 50s and 70s. Yeah. But nobody has done that. Um, Kylian Mbappe, he's carrying the team. But for me, France is a. France is is look, he carrying the team? He's, now? Carrying, he's carrying the team. Because France look like a one man show right now. Griezmann is, yes, putting in some effort. I like Griezmann. Griezmann is playing that, you know, behind the striker role and he's doing it very, very well. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, what's going to happen if Kylian Mbappe has a bad day? There's no plan B. That's my problem with France. And the midfield for me, the likes of Rabiot, Rabiot be able to do a good job like Pogba did the last time. But we'll see. Time will tell. France look good. They look very sharp. They have scored um, six goals so far. They've considered only two goals. And so far, so good for them. For me, uh, Mbappe is just, he's just coming on leaps and bounds. And I understand um, you're talking about if he has an off day, what can they do? The thing with, with France is they have attacking options. They, have, they, they still don't start with the likes of Coman, who's on the bench. I don't rate him too highly, but he's an option. Turam as well. I would like well, to see... How many of them are goal scorers? I, I would like to see Coman, Mbappe in the middle, and Dembele on the right. I would like to see that because but, I believe that would scare any defense. But Mbappe doesn't like to play as a nine. That's the reason why he's fighting his coach in PSG. He likes to play behind the striker. No, but he doesn't play as a nine for PSG, though. He plays, he plays as a nine for PSG. Does he? Yes, he does. He plays down the middle. Then um, Neymar is on the left, Messi is on the right. Well, I think he do, he'll do his best job through the middle because his pace is electrifying and no one can touch him. 
My question is, where has Hakim Ziyech been all this while? Yesterday, I saw a different Hakim Ziyech. He destroyed, he destroyed Belgium. He destroyed Belgium. He was the talisman yesterday. He led Mo the Moroccans to a 2-0 victory against Belgium. And um, I'm really disappointed for the, for the Belgium side because they have, been, they have had this promise of this golden generation that was coming through with the likes of KDB, Hazard, Lukaku, so on and so forth. And they have really not produced. They have not lived up to expectations. I, I, Kadev, you don't want to hear my opinion on this Belgium thing because I'm frustrated. I'm upset. Because this is another example of a generation wasted. Why would you waste such an incredible generation of KDB, the likes of the Hazard brothers, the Dem Dembele's at the time, the, the um, who else, the Tongans. Like, oh, oh, there's so many different players. Company even had a stint in there. There's so many players I can name. And they've now been wasted on a manager like Roberto Martinez. What has that guy achieved to warrant such a talented squad? He won the FA Cup with Wigan. He got two other teams relegated. But yet we bless him with a, such an expansive squad that if any manager of quality can it be got their hands on that squad, they would have at least got to a major final by now, if not won it. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. But can we really blame it on the coach? Yes. You can't really blame it on the coach because at the end of the day, we have had the likes of Eden Hazard who has not played football in the last four years. Mm -hmm. So KDB cannot do it on his own. Mm -hmm. Lukaku injuries. And to be honest with you, the centre-back pairing is old. Ado Wild Out and Vettigorin. 2022, you're using that centre-back partnership. They are, they are very old. They are going to be beaten out with pace. And to be honest with you, Belgium, yes, they had a very good crop of players at a certain time, which they could have taken advantage of. You had the likes of Carrasco. But now, that generation seems to be fading. I don't know. about Bath. I don't know. Um, it's, it seems like they have wasted eight years and... Um, it's sad. It's sad. It's very, very sad. But let's, we never yeah. can tell. They might still qualify. They, they might still, but they definitely ain't winning something. But let's not take anything away from the, the main topic of yesterday's game, which was Morocco, an African nation who really, really represented themselves well against Belgium. Hakim Ziyech came back from the dead, throwback performance, back to his Ajax days. And I keep telling you Chelsea fans, there's a quality player there if you utilise his strengths correctly. I still think his best position is through the middle. He's been playing wide for Morocco, but because of his quality, he tends to veer in and, and be very, very creative. I think he got a goal and an assist. Yeah, he got a goal and an assist and a brilliant free kick from him. I can't really pronounce the other guy's name, the number 11. It was a brilliant free kick beating Courtois. And um, Morocco looked good and I'm very happy for them. I just hope our other African brothers can follow suit. Real talk. We should all be part of Senegal, the first African team to win in this World Cup. They beat Qatar, the host, and knocked them out of the World Cup. Now, Senegal has a big game with Ecuador. I'm looking forward to that game. I wish Sadio Mane was fit, but I'm sure he has, they have him in spirit. But I'm very proud of Senegal. They lost to the Netherlands, and they had a good game against the Netherlands. They didn't play badly, but they bounced back, and they scored three goals against the host. Yes, Qatar had a poor side, but still on still. What, yeah, within a shout of qualifying for the next round. And it's super impressive because what I said, and we watched the, the Netherlands-Senegal game together, what we said was they just couldn't finish their dinner that day. They created lots of great opportunities, but it was like the spirit of Sadio Mane wasn't carrying them through. But in this game against the host, they took their chances. They pounced on opportunities. They ran them ragged. They created more opportunities. Even when it became to, it came 2-1, it got a little bit shaky at one point, but they put the game to bed of a 3-1. And that's why we said it at the start is Senegal are the most organised African nation out there. With Mane in the team, I believe they could have gone a long way. But you never know with the spirit of the squad. It could be a Denmark experience all over again. Yeah. Denmark in the Euros. They, um, they, they lost their best player, Michael Laudrup, at the time. And they went on to win the Euros, 1992. So I'm not saying that could happen to Senegal, but... They could definitely go a long way, and they're doing Africa proud, 100%. Yeah, shout out to Senegal. Keep repping us in Africa, and also Morocco. And um, big game today for the Ghanaians, too. So um, it's going to be crazy supporting the African brothers.
We wish you guys the best of luck. I wish my country was there, but unfortunately, they didn't make it. Embarrassment. <laughs> but what I will say, that I think this is how we want to close the show today. Kenebi, I just want to give you to give me two names that have really lit up the World Cup so far. I know there's only been two rounds of games, and that's not even finished, but two names that have lit up this World Cup for you so far. And I'll give my two. Well, of course, Messi. Okay. His goal against Mexico was, was a very key goal. For and sure, um, for him and his country. Mbappe. Okay. Okay. So, I, I think Kenebi's going for the more traditional players. I mean, I'm going to go mix it up a little bit. There's a player who I'm upset didn't end up on the, on the winning side yesterday because he, he really, really bossed the game. And that's uh, Musiala for Germany. He's yeah. had two exceptional games. I know he's not been on a winning side just yet, but that boy, still a teenager. I think he's got 15 goal contributions in Bundesliga this season. He's going on leaps and bounds. So for him, I've, if Germany get to the second round, I still see a big tournament for him and a massive future. That's number one. And number two, I've got to give it to the veteran, the former Premier League guy, West Ham, three goals so far in the World Cup. That's Erna Valencia. He's doing great things, breaking history every time he plays for Ecuador. So those are my two players there. World Cup fever, World Cup fever. We are loving it right now. There's still a couple more weeks left of the tournament. There's a game every day for the next couple of weeks. So all the wives are, and girlfriends are upset while the boyfriends and husbands are super excited for the next few weeks. And when that ends, Guess what? Club football returns. There you have it. That's another episode of Round on the Ground with myself, Kunle, a.k.a. the Ninja Englishman. And Kanebi, a.k.a. Mr. Kubo, Kubo, Kubo. Feel the heat. See you next week.